Well, if you care about the world so much, then why do you only talk about Palestine? Why don't you talk about everyone who's oppressed? Why don't you talk about the Congo? Why don't you talk about Sudan or Haiti? Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into a topic that's been on many minds lately. Have you ever wondered why certain global issues seem to capture the world's attention more than others? Recently, a thought-provoking perspective was shared by a woman who questioned the focus on the hashtag Free Palestine Movement. While other conflicts such as those in the Congo, Sudan, Haiti and beyond often remain in the shadows, let's unveil this complex issue and explore why some struggles gain prominence while others are overlooked. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our insightful discussions. Firstly, let's acknowledge the significance of the hashtag Free Palestine Movement. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict has been a long-standing complex issue that resonates globally. The hashtag represents a call for justice human rights and a resolution to a conflict that has captured the world's attention for decades. It's a movement that has sparked conversations, activism and solidarity across various communities. Buckle up because we are about to unravel the layers of this thought-provoking perspective. Before we dive into the details, ensure you're part of our curious community by hitting that subscribe button and ringing the notification bell. Trust us, you wouldn't want to miss these riveting insights we are about to unveil. Let's get into it. Yo, this is a great question because it has such a great answer. Besides the fact that I personally happen to have dedicated the last six years of my life to studying Palestine for my doctoral degree, it's actually a lot deeper than that, like on a collective level. See, here's the thing. Wherever you are in the West, your government doesn't mind if you talk about Congo. It doesn't mind if you talk about the Sudan or Haiti or anywhere else in the world, but it does mind if you talk about Palestine. Your government is ready to make things very personal if you even think to I mean, in English, they're still using one of the land's ancient names as an insult. Philistine. Philistine means like a lowbrow, good, hostile to culture. Th Philistines. Your lord is disgust. These people. Don't you take their disgust. Now at the same time, and this is what's truly sickly like this is what's genuinely ill about this whole situation it's that they do want you to talk about palestine but they want you to call it israel and they want you to ignore the fact that israel is being actively built on top of Palestine. They want you to ignore the fact that the people of the land have been and continue to be displaced and replaced by new people from all around the world. And they want you to call these new people Israelis. They want you to ignore the fact that Judaism is a faith that comes in many different forms and has many different adherences and practices. They want you instead to accept it as an ethno-nationality. And while they want you to ignore that Judaism is a faith, they also want to co-opt that faith and its teachings as their own because God promised them the land. But they also want you to ignore the fact that according to the teachings, God promised them the land in book three and then took it away in book four because they were naughty. And on top of that, they want you to ignore the fact that the Holy Land is holy to all the believers of Abraham. And they want you to ignore the fact that Zion and ways help facilitate massacres of Jewish people around the world, not just in Europe. And they want you to ignore the fact that the word Holocaust and how many more Palestinians need to be whole for this to be called a Holocaust. But yeah, talk about it. Talk about Israel. Stand with Israel. There is a little bit of, um, how you say, hypocrisy, no? It's a little bit alarming, n'est-ce pas? Palestine is our portal, the portal between us and our entire collective shadow. Because the voice of Palestine has reached us. The cry that comes from Gaza doesn't only come from Gaza, it comes on behalf of the entire world, on the behalf of the Congo, on behalf of Sudan. Israel and Palestine is like where the physical body and the shadow meet. And we, as people in the West, are Israel. We thought we were the light, that we were democracy, we were freedom, technology, progress. We are fashion and culture, and our shadow was Palestine. Congo, Sudan, the dark, the poor, the hungry, the uneducated, the not an English speaker, Philistines. But when you look now 
to Palestine. When you watch these videos where you see the body and the shadow, where you see the Israeli and the Palestinian meeting face to face, when you see the native with a stone and the soldier ready to run with a tank, when you see the little boy to prison by a uniform, when you see the little girl lying under the rubble from the air stress, who looks like the body and who looks like the shadow? to you. Now, let's consider the role of media in shaping our perceptions. Media coverage plays a pivotal role in amplifying certain issues, often driven by geopolitical factors, public interest and even sensationalism. The hashtag Free Palestine movement has gained substantial media attention, contributing to its widespread awareness. While hashtag Free Palestine receives global attention, it is essential to recognize that the lack of focus on other conflicts doesn't diminish their significance. Often the disparity in attention is is linked to geopolitical interest, historical context, or media coverage. Wars and crises in the Congo, Sudan, Haiti, and elsewhere are equally deserving of global concern, yet they struggle to break through the noise. Now let's hear what our sister had to say about this video in the following stitch. Stick around until the breakdown. Respectfully, I have to disagree with you. You have to speak about Haiti. Sorry, I couldn't sleep because I had to reply to this. You have to speak about Haiti, not about our trauma but as a source of inspiration. There's a reason why the powers want to only talk about the trauma of Haiti and our poverty because they don't want the world to know about our history. Think about it. A group of Haitian slaves were able to defeat the world's greatest army. I repeat myself, a group of Haitian slaves were able to defeat Napoleon's army at the time the world's greatest army. That means we can do it too. We need to speak about Haiti's revolution to use it as a source of inspiration, not only for the watermelon people, but for all of us, because if the Haitians could do it, so can we. We're diving into a fascinating topic that governs what we see and more importantly, what we don't see in our news feeds. Yes, we're talking about media prioritization and how it influences our global awareness. So grab your popcorn and let's get into it. Now, have you ever wondered how certain global issues dominate the headlines while others seem to fade into the background? It's not just by chance. Media prioritization plays a crucial role. Let's unpack this. Media acts as a lens through which we view the world. But here's the kicker. It's not a natural lens. Editorial decisions, geopolitical considerations, and audience interest plays a part in what gets the spotlight. Think about it. What you see on the news directly impacts how you perceive global events. If a particular conflict is constantly covered, it becomes ingrained in our minds. But what about the stories that don't make the cut? There are several factors at play here. The severity of the conflict, political interest, and sometimes, let's admit it, the clickability of a story. Media outlets have a responsibility to inform, but they're also running a business. Media shapes public awareness, and awareness sparks action. So what can we do? Stay informed, diversify your news sources, and question the narratives. The more we understand media dynamics, the better equipped we are to navigate the complex landscape. And there you have it, folks, a sneak peek into the world of media prioritization. Now, let's talk about social media activism as we explore the world of hashtags, influencers, and why some causes shine brighter than others. Buckle up, it's going to get wild. Social media, the virtual town square where hashtags reign supreme. First off, Kudos to social media activism for mobilizing people and bringing attention to critical issues. It's the modern day ruling cry. But here's the twist. Not all causes get equal airtime. Why does hashtag free Palestine dominate your feed while other equally important issues might not? It's a complex dance of timing, relatability, and let's face it, the shareability of a cause. The traction factor is real. Now, influencers and content creators, the puppeteers of the digital era, their role is more than just posting pretty pictures. They shape the narratives and amplify voices and inadvertently influence what gets our attention. 
Let's aim for nuanced engagement. It's not about pitting causes against each other. It's about understanding the dynamics at play, supporting diverse voices, and recognizing that every issue deserves its moment in the spotlight. So social media activism, a force for change, but with its quirks. As we navigate this digital terrain, let's be conscious consumers, amplify unheard voices, and remember the power of a hashtag goes beyond the trend. Now, on this perspective, it's time to talk about the lack of inclusivity in the world of hashtags and rallies. It's not about competing for attention, it's about understanding the unintended hierarchy of global issues. Enter the concept of intersectionality, the understanding that social issues are interconnected. Our goal to weave a tapestry of activism that recognizes the unique struggles of every thread. Let us champion inclusivity. It's not a zero-sum game. By amplifying diverse voices and shedding light on often overlooked struggles, we create a more robust, nuanced narrative. Our challenge is clear to build bridges, not barriers. It's about fostering solidarity and recognizing that every cause, every struggle contributes to the global story of change. So dear viewers, let's be architects of inclusivity in activism. Celebrate Celebrate diversity, embrace intersectionality, and remember, a united front is a powerful force. If you're finding this video informative and insightful, do smash the like button and subscribe. Now, this next topic is as challenging as it is crucial, addressing multiple global crises. Let's unpack the hurdles and brainstorm some solutions. Picture this, a world grappling with numerous crises, each vying for attention. But here's the catch, resources, attention spans, and media coverage are finite. Welcome to the complex realm of highlighting multiple crises. Our first challenge, resources, with demands from various fronts. How do we allocate limited resources to diverse global issues without neglecting any? It's a delegate juggling act. Then comes the attention span puzzle. In an era of information overload, capturing and maintaining public attention is like trying to hold water in your hands. How do we ensure that important stories don't slip through the cracks? Now let's talk about the media coverage. While it's a powerful tool for awareness, it can also be a double-edged sword. How do we navigate a landscape where some stories dominate while others struggle for airtime? But fear not intrepid minds, we are not here just to unravel challenges but to explore strategies. How can we creatively leverage media, maximize resources and keep the public engaged with a myriad of global issues? So my friends, as we confront these challenges head on, let's also brainstorm solutions. The world needs all hands on deck. In this last segment, this journey takes us deep into the annals of history, exploring the often overlooked narratives of regions like Haiti. Get ready for a fascinating dive into the past and its reverberations in the present. History A treasure trove of stories, yet some narratives have been pushed to the sidelines. Today we unravel the historical context of marginalized stories with a spotlight on regions like Haiti. Our exploration begins with acknowledging the neglected histories. How have certain regions been overshadowed and what impact does this historical oversight have on our current global perception? Zooming into the present, we will dissect the ramifications of historical narratives. How do these overlooked stories affect societies today? Understanding this link is crucial for a more enlightened perspective. Now let us talk about the power of storytelling. How can a nuanced and inclusive approach reshape our understanding of the past and present? The pen, or in this case, the keyboard, can indeed be mightier than the sword. As we navigate these historical waters, let us think about how we can shift the narrative paradigm. How can we ensure that every region's story is told, heard, and appreciated? It's a quest for a more balanced and harmonious storytelling landscape. Now as we wrap up, remember the power of stories. By amplifying voices and sharing narratives, we contribute to a more nuanced and informed world. If you found this exploration enlightening, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let's continue this dialogue and work together towards a future where every story is heard and valued. Until next time, stay curious, signing off.